Well, almost immediately upon watching part one of this, I decided to make an addendum and include some things that I noticed I'd left out or just overlooked because even while watching the video, I could see, oh, look at you, you didn't even notice this was there and that was there. One of the first things I want to point out is that there are classes that are quite specific that you can get around having to use IDs that will um, cross over any themes that you put in, okay? So let's take a quick look at this page and I'm going to look at its source code. And uh, let's bring this up here and scroll on down to where the navbar stuff is. If you remember, it's kind of funny that they've indented all this stuff. But we don't care right now because look at this. We have some classes. Now, I don't know. You didn't see my um, my menus thing when I was editing the menus. When I made these menus, I did give them names. This is the test navigation menus. So here's like the first one what was called test navigation colors. PG. Okay. All right. So let's look at that source and see what we can find in terms of any classes that might be going on. Oh, and plus it's a menu and the menu itself does have a name called test navigation. All right, so those are two useful little bits. So, uh, so yes, again, the nav ID for the nav bar is access and its roles navigation and it has a title in a div class called main menu, etc., etc. But look at this. We now get into this div class, okay? And its div is menu test navigation container. That's the name of my. That's the name of my menu, menu test navigation, and the word container. Okay, menu test navigation container. So there's a class that I can attack that will hit anything that's in uh, this particular container. Okay. Then we get into the ULs, of course, and it gives it an ID, as we pointed out before, and a class of menu. But that's, again, not very specific. But this is very specific. This is the menu that you saved in WordPress. And this is the class it's giving it, so that you can be very specific about addressing it. And it won't matter anymore what IDs the various um, themes might give it, okay, if it's in case it's changing. Now, in this case, I have a feeling that the themes always will adopt or may adopt the IDs that were assigned by WordPress. You know, as test navigation is the name I gave it, and menu test, test navigation is what's calling on as its ID. But I'll just bet you some themes are going to change what the ID of the nav is, depending on how they draw their blocks. However, they may keep the class consistent with what WordPress is already sending them because of what you named your menu when you created the menu on this page. Okay, so this name, look for it. Whatever you put in here as menu name, look for it as a class floating around in your code. Another thing to look for is the name that you gave the menu items. And we were talking about how menu items have an ID and that that ID number likely will change. However, look right next to it. There's a class called page test one. Uh, I think I'm actually, yeah, page test one. So what's that telling me? Let's see. Um, that's not this item. What, what item is it? Page test one. I don't see where I've even got a page called that. But, bet your bippy, there's going to be something that has something to do with that. The word test and page one is something that, uh, oh, well, no, I really don't know. But take a look at that, that since that's the nav, that's, that's in your code, it's in the nav bar, it's got a class. 
so you can attempt to address this item if you're after just the item and it's something you've learned out of your source code okay um, so let's uh, take another look for another one there's page test 3 child which is a submenu item page test 2 so this is quite interesting you've got classes that are addressing specific menu items okay I'm not sure where they're getting these from page test 4 page test 5 blog so where's it pulling these class names from I'm not sure but just analyze your source code and see if you can find any sometimes you got to get pretty tricky I found for instance in uh, headway themes that I had to look for a class to specify for categories because I only wanted to have specific categories being addressed because I wanted to have a separate category link for that just pulled certain categories and have that be able to highlight in order to find a unique identifier for it I had to go way up top and it had a list of things in the body class uh, that included a category identifier so it was a theme that was using its own way of uh, identifying what the post had okay what kind of a post it was uh, right there at the top so so look at look all over the place just remember that CSS always reads from the top down so if you can find something earlier it will affect the things that are later okay so just you and then when you list it in your child theme or in your CSS it's got to be in that order with the earlier stuff in the list first followed by the later stuff okay now that's a good rule of thumb to follow okay so that was the uh, the big thing I believe that I wanted you to make note of now another thing I wanted to point out was some other themes and how they it did things headway for instance um, here's an early morning style sheet based on uh, thesis okay early morning uh, no thematic I'm sorry and uh, it's a child theme from thematic and in fact if you go and get this it's called early morning it's a nice little theme I'll provide a link to it um, he uh, he includes uh, reset default browser CSS from Eric Meyer's work and on top of that puts in the default typography based on blueprint from uh, Google codes blueprint thing and so he sets up all of that stuff before he even starts getting into his own custom stuff so then he starts doing his pull quotes and um, his other layout items and things that make this particular theme unique and that's um, this one right here early morning now you notice he used underlines for his unique identifiers for things if a post is a got a, a child if it's if it's the thing that's ident that's been selected it gets underlined by itself but if I select one of the children then it loads in it keeps that item underlined and doesn't really do much of anything identifying the child at this point but as we saw in the other video that's something that's doable you can make it so that the main thing is underlined and these the uh, actual current post is a different color uh, the categories thing um, it doesn't particularly do anything here and yet you now know that you can make that happen it does however when I'm on the page you notice it lights that thing up okay so anyway so here we have another case where we have some themes and so in its style sheet you have to sort of look around and you can use you can use the search in Firefox and probably others control F and look for an instance like there's the word ancestor and look for next and there we go there's that list of treatments and notice he's got a class for his menu SF menu okay 
So if we look at the source code for his page, let me get rid of this source. And we look at the source. We scroll on down a little ways. And there it is. Um, what did we say he called it? I know it's access is the uh, name. What did I say there? Yeah, early morning. Dot SF menu. So look around the, the this code here for where the SF is. And um, let's see, Brandy. I see he does have a div ID of access here for the menu navigation. I'm not sure where he's pulling this from. I do see, look, page test two again. I'm sure I'm actually pulling the source from the same, from the right page here. Let me see. Um. Yes, early morning style. Okay, let's just scroll on down. Yeah, so it's still pulling those classes, and those are from WordPress itself. Remember, page test two, page test three, child, page test four, page test five, blog. So those are some kind of classes that I must have assigned somewhere in the menus when I made those menus. <laughs> I don't have no idea. I cannot remember where. Maybe we'll take a look and see if we can find it. Um, as we were saying, the uh, used this dot sf menu. So let's go ahead in here and see if we can find that. Again, it was find in there and dot sf. I don't find it in any sf sf dot menu. Ah, here we go. So he has it up here up top. Ah, uh, yes, he's using it as the class. So. The ID may be menu test navigation, but he's got a class of SF menu. So there's a class that's, that, that can be attacked. Okay. Um, yes, indeed. So let's look some more at the code he's used. He uh, did the string of things, the current page item, A. And don't forget the A like I did in the last video sfmenu.currentpageAncestor. So this is how he's saying this specific menu is with this class, but notice he's using a class and not an ID. Okay, well that's handy um, to know. I don't recall seeing sfmenu in the other 2011 um, version. Let's see, which was that? Oh, it was over here. Let's see. Just bear with me here. I think this is worth knowing. Let's just go ahead and look for it. SF. Nope, there's no SF menu in here. So that's not something that got inherited from WordPress. That's something that his class is putting in as a definition for the menu. Okay. So that's useful to know. All right, again, when you're doing child theme stuff, you probably want to keep it more generic and not think, do things that are going to be class, uh, be theme specific. Um, so just so you can carry your ideas across different themes and try them out in different themes when you're working with child themes. That way you inherit the strengths of the, child, of the themes that you're using and yet can overcome some of the stylistic things that you don't want to have standard. Also, always remember that important thing. If they've addressed an ID that comes before your thing, before your change, it's going to uh, take precedence and you're going to have to override it with the exclamation mark important thing. One last thing to make sure you notice is notice current page ancestor and current page parent are if the underscore is separating them, but many of these uh, other items have the um, are separated by dashes like look at these three all three of these are dashes and uh, so you have to be mindful of which is w which or which in this case so 
Uh, I try to call attention to it, I believe, in the article. Make sure I do. But, um, but you see, current page, underscore, 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 and yet these are dashes. Okay, and there's an underscore, and there's a dash, and uh, there's an underscore. So, always be watching for that, and uh, I'll make sure to make a note of that in the article. Okay, um, those are the main things, I believe, that I was going to make a big deal out of. And, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so... For now, that's addendum number one to <laughs> the big one. And I hope that that, uh, that answers some of the questions and covers things that I left out and gets you mindful of how to deal with uh, other themes that you're looking at. Um, the headway stuff is a completely other ball of wax, uh, just for a quick look at its source. I'll show you how it's... Um, it's got some stuff that's pretty cool because it's got the, the post types, the slugs, let's see, uh, various things about the layout. Oh, if I go to a actual post, let's see, there's a post. And let me just look at that source. And now you can see where it uses these S categories to show the different categories, the category that's assigned to this thing. Okay, so that's a handy thing. So always be looking at, see if anybody's done anything like that to add helpful classes to your thing. They use for menu items, they use a different system. They call them in terms of blocks with numbers. So again, that's where your ID would have bit you if you just relied on that. They also call them block type navigation, which is helpful because you can address all your blocks of the type navigation with just that one thing. But again, that's going to be theme specific. Okay. Um, so let's find menu main item, menu LID. So again, we have a differentiation here where I'm not seeing the same types of classes for the names of my menu items as I had before. But um, I do see the menu item number and I see the types. But that other stuff that was in there, I'm not seeing. Uh, menu item type post, see the menu item as a class and as an ID. But if you recall in the other one, it also had derived some kind of a menu um, descriptor from some class that was being assigned by WordPress that I'm not seeing in Headway. So again, you just, you just have to find your workarounds and, find, and be mindful of what's changing from one theme to another if you're switching around in themes a lot and make your changes accordingly. Alrighty? So, uh, so there you go. That's a little bit on that and hopefully We've got you rolling so that you can actually start diving in there and doing some experiments and make some of your own mistakes. Don't forget those commas and semicolons and selectors and you'll be good. All right, take care.